Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you a comparison video. I'm here to compare four styles, all of them a similar cut to what I have on my head. So a short, sort of A line, a little bit longer in the back and shorter in the front. I think this is such a great style for summer. I think it's a great style for winter if you're going to be wearing long, um, tall, high, <laughs> high neck shirts or scarves. I also think that it can be a really, really great professional style and casual style. So this one checks a lot of boxes. So even though you may not currently wear short styles, I encourage you to stick around for this video because I'm going to talk a little bit about how things can change on the wig journey and why having a wig or two outside of your comfort zone can be really, really helpful because you never know when you'll need a style that you don't currently have. So stick around and I'll share all of my experience on this topic with you. recently had the opportunity to review a couple of Raquel Welch wigs, uh, four name brand wigs. I reviewed Hurt It All and Go To Style. And they both are a similar cut to this one. The one on my head is Renee of Paris Shane in the color Melted Marshmallow. I reviewed this style last summer and I wore this so much last year. I just absolutely fell in love with it. And one of the first styles that I ever owned that is similar to this, which I will also show today, is John Renault Ignite. And I really love Ignite. And it's funny because I was never a short wig wearer, short hair wig wearer. And I just never felt like they were flattering for me. But there is something about an A-line short style that I think flatters a lot of people. I also have learned through my four years of wig wearing that having a, a short wig or two can be so useful. There will, there, well, I don't know if there will be, but there could be times in your wig wearing journey when you will find you really want something up off your neck and shorter. For me, that happens in the summer when it's really hot. It also happens in the winter if I'm wearing a scarf or I don't wear high necked shirts very often anymore because I get so hot, um, kind of going through the change of life and lots of health issues. So I have lots and lots of hot flashes. So I don't tend to wear those clothes as much anymore, but I used to, and I will throw a scarf on every now and then. And knowing what friction does to synthetic wigs uh, ha has me truly believing that having a short wig like this could be so useful. So even if you don't wear short wigs right now, I think it's worth educating yourself on them, learning a little bit about the different types of styles and you know the pros and cons about them because at some point in your wig wearing journey, you may find you'll want a short style or maybe you'll come across one on clearance or on the secondary market such as eBay, Poshmark or the Facebook groups where you can sell wigs and Maybe it's a price and you just can't pass it up. I never thought that I would wear short wigs. I really didn't think I would get comfortable with it. But once I found a type of a short wig and a style that worked for me, I realized the value. So I just want to put that plug in there. I'm not trying to sell you any wigs. I just really want you to be aware of how things change and what you may not like today may grow on you in the future. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to quickly show you each of these styles. I'm going to talk a little bit about their differences just so that you've got a good comparison in case this is a style you might be interested in trying. And I will tack some pictures onto the end of all of these side by side. So I'll do like a side by side of all four from the front, from the back, and from the side so that you can see how they compare. They're very similar with subtle differences. And I'll also tell you about some things you should be looking for that might help you choose when there are so many that are really a similar style. So this isn't obviously every single A-line, short A-line kind of bob style out there, but these are the four that I have. So let me show you this one from all sides. And then I'll start grabbing the mannequin heads. So of all of the ones I'm going to show you in this video, this is the shortest overall. 
So the nape on this one is one inch, and the longest nape that I'm gonna show you is four inches, but don't let that fool you. And that one, I'm gonna, I have a chart so I can stay on track, go-to style, is my one with the longest nape. So when you think about napes, and you're not, so let me back up here. If you're going to be considering, I just wanna make sure I actually grab the right one. Okay, I did. When you're considering a short wig, in videos where I've done reviews of these, one of the things I've warned you about, if you've seen them, and if not, this will be the first time you hear this, you really have to be aware of your own personal hairline in the back if you have hair. Because napes shorter than maybe about two inches are where you might start to see people's bio hair if they have a low hairline. So be very, very cautious with wigs that have a nape of below two inches until you're aware of where your hairline falls on wigs like that. So for example, the one on my head, like I just said, is a one inch nape. So there's only one inch right here. That is a very short nape. Now, something that could make up for that is if the layers above it are a little bit longer, that can help. This one is uh, go to Raquel Welch go-to style. This one has a four inch nape. It's not really longer in this area, but the nape is longer. And what I wanna do is I wanna put this one on and I wanna show you how that might impact you and why I'm saying it's so important for you to know what your hairline is. So again, this is one inch. And now when I throw go-to style on, And that's, you'll, you'll be able to see that a lot better in um, the side-by-side -side pictures, but that's really what I'm referring to. How far down on your neck does that hair go? Will it cover your bio hair? Um, now, that said, Sometimes a nape this long is uncomfortable for people because it's it really rubs up on your neck. So if you're very sensitive to synthetic fibers, that's something to be aware of as well. And as long as you can get good coverage, you might want to consider a shorter nape so that you don't have that. So that was something I was not aware of in the beginning of my wig wearing journey. And at that time, kind of the first, I think, probably short wig like this that I considered keeping, let me actually keep it on, on the mannequin head before I pull it off. I started to pull off and now it's all messed up. This is Ignite by John Renault. One of the most popular wigs of this type of style and a lot of people are familiar with Ignite. This was really the first one I felt comfortable in that is the short and I really wasn't aware of the whole nape issue when I got ignite I hadn't buzzed my hair yet so my hair was still pretty long it was you know down almost to my shoulders there wasn't a lot of it but it was long and I really struggled hiding my bio hair and so that's why I really stress this topic um, one area where it can be the most evident is is actually on the sides here so back here may not be as much of a problem as the bio hair that's right here. All of that right there can be a real challenge because that's what can poke out of a wig with a short nape. And so Ignite, I'll throw this one on for you. The most bang for your buck is going to come from those side-by-side -side pictures at the end anyway, but you're getting a kind of a chance to see so one of the challenges with Ignite, now the front, Ignite has the longest front of all of the four wigs here. It's got a really down to my chin. It's actually one of the um, ones that in this kind of style with a really short back really is um, kind of the gold standard when it comes to that long A-line. But Ignite kind of dips in right here on the side. And sometimes my bio hair will show if it's not freshly buzzed. And I'm growing my bio hair out right now, so I do have to be aware of that when I put wigs on, that whole side part of it. Um, if you have long hair, 
you can pull it all into a ponytail and then you could put some hairspray or gel on that part if that's a problem for you and just sort of slick it up and that can help. But if you have short hair like I do right now, if you buzz your hair but you don't like buzz it super short or you've buzzed your hair and you're about to grow it out, those are things to be aware of. This is very, very hard to control when you're in the grow out phase. I can try to put gel on it and hairspray on it, but it's gonna be really hard to keep that from poking out. So I want you to be aware of that, and I will talk about it in a video I'm gonna do here in the future about buzzing your hair and one of the drawbacks. Um, I will also say that, let me see here, which one is this? One of these, I'm trying to remember when I did the review. I think this is, uh, so this one is Heard It All by Raquel Welch. I think this one is actually probably the worst culprit right there. You can see my bio hair, I'm fairly certain. I, I can't tell, but I think you can probably see it. This one is the worst one when it comes to the tapering at the sides. So this one has a one and, set, one and three quarters inch nape. So this is the second longest. So Ignite is one and a half inches. Shane, the first one, was one inch. Um, Go To Style was four inches. This is one and three quarters, but that's just right here. Not there. <laughs> there, it's very, very closely cut. So that is something that you really need to be aware of. Like I said, with anything less than a two inch nape, you really need to be aware of that. That can be hard to tell. Not all reviewers focus on those things. So it may not be something you're gonna be able to find out by a review. So if you're not yet familiar with your bio hair and your nape, length or what you need for coverage or maybe you know that you've got challenges I know that I have challenges here I have a low hairline when I was buzzing my hair I would actually um, completely kind of shave that part of my hair off uh, just so that I didn't have to worry about it but right now when I'm growing it out I am kind of hesitant to do that because I'm growing it out for a reason um, but if you're aware of that then I wouldn't purchase a wig with a short nape unless you can return it. I would probably not go with a clearance style that's not returnable or purchase it on the secondary market until you know about those coverage issues. With longer wigs, you can always try to style it, figure out the style, you know. I think we're always sort of not sure, 100% sure if a wig will work with us but or work for us, but often we once we get some skills, we know we can make any wig work. I think the exception is when you can't hide your bio hair and it doesn't blend and it's the wrong color. There's not very much you can do if your bio hair is showing. Unless you want to shave it off right there, which is an option and a lot of people do that if they wear short wigs a lot. So that is just something to think about. So again, this one is Heard It All by Raquel Welch. I have a review of every single one of these out there. So as you can see, they're all very, very similar. And so when you look at the measurements on a website, so let's say you're looking for one of these types of wigs, and so you're going comparing all of the ones that you can find like this, you're going to find the following measurements typically. You're gonna find what the front measurement is, which is typically this hair up here in the front. So if there's a bang, if there's not a bang. And so this one actually is the second longest, according to the measurements on the website, compared to Ignite. I'm not 100% certain what measurement they took to say that this is seven and a half inches. I'm not sure I trust that that front is actually what they measured. But that said, all you can do is go by their measurements. So you're gonna look at the front. So trying to determine what length you're comfortable with, you probably wanna know what this measurement is. Your hairline to your chin. You'll wanna know that so that you know where a wig's gonna fall on you. My hairline to chin is eight inches. So I know that if I get a wig that's eight inches long, like from the crown down, it's probably gonna hit me right about chin level. This one, they say it's about seven inches, and 
overall, I would say that's true. These shorter layers, that's absolutely not true. But overall, you see it's barely, it's not quite hitting me at the chin. So that's how I'll know when I look at the measurements on the website where a wig's going to fall on me. Let me show you Ignite again as I knock mannequin heads over. Ignite is eight inches from, which measurement do they have that? They have that from the front. So they have eight inches on their front measurement. And you can see, it goes all the way down to my chin. So it's probably correct. And so that's one thing to look at. Another thing then would be that nape and just making sure that you've got the coverage that you need. I would say on the, out of all of these that I'm showing you, uh, go-to style, Raquel Welch go-to style is the best when it comes to side coverage. Let me grab that one for you again and I'll show that to you. So this video is more about giving you a, a look at these styles, but really talking about how you assess because there's so many similar wigs out there. How do you assess which one's gonna be the better fit for you? So go-to style, let me get it situated, make sure I don't have any fibers in anywhere. They did, uh, this one is actually hurt at all. They did such a good job of bringing all of this hair right here, down right there, see that? So it covers my bio hair in a way that uh, go, uh, I'm getting these confused. I knew this was going to happen. I should have put my colors on here in the way go-to style doesn't. So this is hurt it all. No, this is go-to style in the way that hurt it all doesn't. So you've got that better coverage right there. So again, this is going to be some trial and error and it isn't always going to be something that you will hear reviewers talk about. I know that because I'm aware of this, I talk about it, but another reviewer who maybe doesn't wear wigs like this, but they, but they review them, it may not occur to them that that's something that's important. I do know that when Taz reviewed Hurt It All, which is the blonde one that I showed you, um, that's Shane. This one that I showed you that had the really bad coverage on the side, she talked about that too. And so I definitely think other reviewers cover some of this, but you may not find that in reviews. So your best bet, if you're unsure, is to make sure that you're purchasing a wig that you can return. Because when you get poor coverage issues, those are the hardest things to deal with. So hopefully that helped you guys. Um, the other measurements that you might find are crown and sides. I know for these examples, uh, Shane didn't have a side measurement. It had the front measurement, the crown measurement, and the nape measurement, but no side measurement. The problem with those measurements is you're not always sure where they're basing their measuring from. Uh, did What is the side measurement? Where did they start that measurement? Um, and so it can be really hard to assess those. I'd say the front and the nape are a little bit easier. The crown can be as well, but if it's a super layered wig, you might not get a real accurate representation from that. So just make sure that you get one that you can return until you know how things fit you. Um, the other thing that you can't ever tell, unfortunately, by the, by the retailers is permatease. So all of these have permatease. I would say that go-to style, has very little, Shane has very little. Ignite, a lot of permatease right up here. Ignite, in addition to being very long here, Ignite is quite poofy in this area. It also doesn't have any mono features, just a deep lace front. So that's something, this is not, um, this is not Ignite, but I'm just sort of demonstrating on this one. So it's really poofy up here and um, has just a lace front. So those are things that you'll want to look at too and learn what your preference is. So let me just show this one. I'm going to throw them all on once again and give you a sense of the permatease. So this one that I have on is Go To Style by Raquel Welch. This one has very, has just a tiny bit of permatease right here to give it sort of that bump and that classic look of an A-line but it really is, doesn't have much back there at all. 
and I love the uniqueness of how they did these layers back here they're very flattering even though they're super short because they're not spiky and then you've got the teeniest bit of permatease on the sides this thing is not a heavy permatease wig that is something that some people are really going to appreciate this is the permatease queen ignite and this one is so long there but it's got tons of permatease up here this one is very very full and poofy if you're someone who struggles with short wigs and you feel like short low density isn't flattering because maybe you've got a rounder face or you're you're a little heavy i'm a little heavy i'm probably about 50 pounds overweight or if you're really um kind of tall i'm 5'9 so sometimes short wigs look silly on me because i'm not petite something with length and some volume could really be helpful to balance out some of those features so if you're looking for something with a lot of volume you can really get volume out of this one ignite could be a great option for you and it's a very popular style then we've got heard it all and this one is has very very little permatease. I would say go-to style, the first one, had more than this one. They're both Raquel Welch wigs. They're both heat-friendly fibers. The only one that doesn't have heat-friendly fibers in this group is Shane. This one is just super fun, super professional. It's got, again, a little bit of permatease to give you that lift, but they achieve some of that with layering, not as much permatease. And it's just so attractive. This is the one, though, with the not great coverage on the sides if you have bio hair that you need to hide. And then the last one is Shane by Renee of Paris. And I would say of all of these, this one is the lowest density. It feels like it's got lower density when it's on my head. It's not the lightest, though. Um, actually, go-to style, this one, the kind of the red one I had on, is by weight, it's lower weight. But this one feels like it's the lowest weight. It has permatease right here. But that's really it. And it's got... Um, more of a sort of sleek it's not as layered so at the end of the day here's four great styles that are short a line flattering for a lot of people because it's not super short around the face you can tuck all of them you can put clips in all of them they all have at least a lace front most of them have a mono part I think they all have a mono part except for ignite so you have some styling options. But in the heat of the summer, having hair off your neck, being able to kind of tuck this away from your face, the light density, they're all under three ounces, really can be super helpful. So just consider that when you're looking at wigs or if you're struggling with the wig journey and you typically get longer wigs and you've been struggling in the summer heat, a short wig like this can be really helpful. For me, one of the biggest keys is getting the hair off my neck. So it's either a short wig or it's an updo. It's got to be one of the two. Let me know if you guys have any questions and stay tuned for all of the comparison pictures. And so if this was something you were curious about now, you have a four-way comparison to look at. Thanks for watching, you guys.